Bible predicts in the time of the end, beware of false prophets. Jesus said in Matthew 24, beware of false prophets, for in the last days there will be many of them, and they will deceive many. Uh, Paul said in 1 Timothy 4, in the last days there will be deceiving spirits, false teachers that bring in doctrines of demons themselves, etc. Peter in 2 Peter chapter 2 uh, said it this way. Peter in that passage speaks out and he says, beware of false prophets that are among the people, for there will be false teachers among you as well, bringing in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and ultimately they will cause the way of the truth to be evil spoken of. That is exactly where we are today. Uh, instead of people saying, well, I respect the church and what it stands for, uh, and uh, but that's just not for me. Uh, you guys go ahead and do that if you want to. I, I'm going to live my own life my own way. No, that's not the attitude that you see in society today. People who have taken a deliberate decision against God, against Christ, and against the Bible are angry. Uh, and they are attacking the church. And the more they attack, the more they expose the difference between a community of loving believers who are in love with God, love with the Lord, in love with one another, and who are given by God a love for the world itself and are willing to reach out to the world as opposed to a, 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 an attitude in the world that says, uh, I hate the church and I hate God and I hate everything that it stands for. It's always amazed me that uh, atheists claim there really is no God. And yet they turn around and they're mad at a God who isn't there. And when you hear them talk, they hate God and they're mad at God. There is no God. Who cares? Uh, why not just blow the whole thing off? But they don't do that. Why? Because God has created us in the image and likeness of God. We're created to know that there is a God. We are created to be in fellowship with God Himself. And when we're not, there is an empty vacuum in the soul that is crying out desperately to be filled with spiritual truth and reality. The challenge is that in the deception of false teaching, it's so easy to be suckered into something else and to think, this is going to satisfy me. Now I've really found the answer, only to discover that it's a dead-end street. Now for people who find a real, genuine experience with Christ, who go into a church that upholds the truth and preaches the gospel like we did when we were kids, uh, and the Lord uh, upheld in that church His own power and strength and message to our hearts and lives, it changed everything. And the wonderful, loving fellowship of a Christian community around you uh, is something the world doesn't really know anything about. Now, if you're a member of a Bible-believing church in fellowship with that church, you ought to thank God for that church. You ought to thank God for the fact that around you uh, is a group of believers. They're not perfect. They're forgiven sinners just like you are. Some of them will disappoint you and some will make mistakes. But ultimately, you will find in the church a greater sense of love and devotion and commitment to one another than you'll find anywhere else in society. I've talked to people who have grown up in totally atheistic societies, in the former Soviet Union, for example, in parts of Europe where they've long since abandoned God. And they will tell you, you're not going to find love and compassion uh, and devotion uh, to the needs of the human race. No, you're on your own. You better make it on your own because nobody's going to come to your rescue because all that sense of Christian love and compassion has disappeared from that society. It's only in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ that you'll really find the truth of who God is, of who you are, and of who you can be in Him. I, I want to urge you, uh, as we're studying Bible prophecy, uh, and we're asking the question, will things get worse as we get to the time of the end? Yes, they will. But does that mean that God has abandoned the church or that the church no longer has a message, a voice to speak to the community of unbelievers today? No, more than ever before. They need to know that there's a real God in heaven who loves them enough that He sent His Son to the cross to die for their sins, that He's powerful enough that He raised Him from the dead, that He is gracious enough that He's willing to forgive your sins and willing to come to live within your heart and life and give you the gift of eternal life absolutely free. You don't have to work for it. You don't have to earn it. In fact, you can't. You simply abandon all hope in yourself and say, God... 
I'm desperate for you. I need you. I need your forgiveness. I need your power. And I can give you the assurance. God loves you so much. He'll never turn down the desperate heart that is seeking Him.